What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a pretty short little video answering a couple of questions about Pathfinder's iconic characters as well as their adventure paths. I don't pretend to be a Pathfinder savant by any means. I am, however, very much so into CRPGs and Pathfinder Kingmaker, of course, being a pretty prominent CRPG that I've played a ton of recently to make story videos and to review after 100%ing that game, and then followed almost immediately by the beta of Wrath of the Righteous, I've been just all over Pathfinder lately. And things that stuck out to me were two specific things that I had to look up and find answers to, so I decided to make this video in hopes that it kind of helps give some information to people who might also be curious. So starting with the iconic characters. Iconic characters are basically like the representative of their associated class. So there is an iconic character for every class in Pathfinder. And this iconic character is like a specific detailed person, basically. Now in the tabletop RPG, you can play this as a PC if you want, because they are like pre-generated characters that you can just pick up and play. They provide templates at levels 1, 7, and 12, I believe. You can also use them as NPCs, of course. In the CRPGs, we see two of them. In Kingmaker, we see Amiri, the iconic barbarian, as well as in Wrath of the Righteous, we see Sila, the iconic paladin. So there you go. That's really what the iconic characters are. Just to give you guys a little background, the reason they exist is because when Pathfinder was first getting started, they wanted to send a very detailed character to the artists for like the covers of their modules. So the iconic characters basically started out as just like reference characters they could send to artists for when they did the illustrations on the front of their modules. And they kind of became this whole thing for Pathfinder. So there is an iconic character now for every single class, which of course corresponds to, to the art that you will usually see on the front of Pathfinder modules. And because they're more fleshed out and given all this attention, it kind of makes them great companions to have along for adventures. And that brings me to the other thing that I was unaware of, and that is the adventure paths. So adventure paths in Pathfinder are a collection of six modules released one at a time, usually in order, once every month, that collectively make up a path that is usually like one to level 15 or more and tells a very complete story. Now, each of the six modules can be played individually, of course. However, they all are tied together as an adventure path. Now, this means that Paizo, the publisher of Pathfinder, is putting out two of these a year because they make one module basically every month. So that leads to, you know, 12 a year, and six of them make up the adventure path, so you wind up with two adventure paths in total. Now, that said, currently there are about 24 of them, including announced adventure paths. While I don't know the exact chronology of them, I find that just knowing what an adventure path is is just useful information to have while you are exploring the Pathfinder series. But there you go, guys. I uh, hope this was informative. Like I said, just a quick video. I wanted to just explain a couple things that when I got it into like Pathfinder more in-depth, I just had questions about, so hopefully this will answer some of your guys' questions as well. So with that, guys, I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz to help the channel grow. But regardless, thank you so much again. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.